to our internet guests, again, we are just so grateful to have you to join us. And, and we thank you for the comments uh, that, that uh, you make concerning this case. So we want to continue to remind you to go down, if you haven't already, go down and subscribe so that when we come up, you'll be notified. That way you won't miss us. And so uh, also share with your friends, your families, your Sunday school classes that we're here so they too can join in and be blessed by the Word of God here at World Class Sunday School. What's wrong with the people today? The people today? Oh, somebody. The people today? Oh, somebody. Tell me. What's wrong with the people today? We welcome you to World Class Sunday School. Again, it's a pleasure to have you join us today as we examine God's Word. Uh, let us go in prayer. Lord, again, we are so grateful for this time to share in your Word. We pray that our hearts and minds are open to what you are teaching us, that we have a desire to learn more about you so we can love you more and serve you better. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks and praises always. We are continuing in our summer quarter. Uh, uh, we're talking about the many faces of wisdom. In unit one, we uh, talked about wisdom in Proverbs. And here beginning with unit two, we're talking about wisdom in the gospel. And, and today, we're going to look at the gospel of Matthew. And our title, the title of our lesson is Vindicating Wisdom. And it's coming from Matthew's 11th chapter, verses 7 through 19. And here, here in our lesson today, uh, we're going to see the generation uh, that Jesus is criticizing here, displaying a lack of wisdom uh, in their evaluation of of both Jesus and John the Baptist. And we have two outlines we're going to follow. The first one is John the Baptist. That's uh, Matthew 11, chapter, verses 7 through 15. And the second outline is this generation, Matthew 11, chapter, verses 16 through 19. And so here, here our lesson uh, starts at, at, at verse 7. But going back, looking at uh, verses 1 through 6 in the 11th chapter, we see where Jesus had, had been teaching his disciples, and now he's sending them out. He's, he's giving them the instruction, his instructions, and he's sending them out to, uh, to uh, spread the gospel or to preach the gospel. And he himself goes out, and uh, in the meantime, John, John the Baptist, who is the forerunner of Jesus, had been imprisoned because uh, because of his declaring to Herod that he was wrong for marrying his brother's wife, and he had John had been thrown into prison, and so here in the seventh verse of Matthew's the 11th chapter. Let's just start here at verse 7. It says, And as they departed, talking about uh, John the Baptist's disciples whom he had sent. Now John had been in prison for, for a while. And he had, evidently he had gotten discouraged and he had doubt about, uh, about Jesus. And he sent his disciples to ask Jesus if he was the Messiah or should he look for another. Now we know that previously John had declared that Jesus was the Lamb of God who come to take away the sins of the world. But we see here after the events that had taken place that, that he had doubt. And so when Jesus answered John's disciples by pointing them to uh, at the, the uh, prophecy in Isaiah uh, 
how the, the manner that he would carry himself in like like Jesus was healing the sick and and the things he was doing the thing his work would, were reflecting on the things that Isaiah had prophesied in chapters 42 and 61 and now when John's disciples had, had departed Jesus uh, at that point began to say unto the multitude, now the, the multitude, the crowd that followed Jesus, uh, in, in that uh, multitude, there were some who believed in Jesus. There were some who were just curious. And then there were some skeptics. And uh, Jesus addressed them concerning their attitude toward John. And he says, it says here, Jesus began to say unto the multitude concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken in the wind. And we know that John was in the wilderness preaching repentance uh, and paving the way for the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And this, this is what he had been uh, called to do, and he was about, about his business. And here Jesus is, uh, was concerned about the attitudes that the mud, that the people had toward John, and and he so he asked the question, "What did you go to see?" Now John, John was not a, a weak, uh, timid preacher. John boldly uh, uh, stood and proclaimed that the only way to God is through repentance. And so here in the eighth, eighth verse, Jesus says, But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment. Uh, and we know that John's clothing was nothing like this. John uh, is described in the Bible by wearing uh, clothes made of camel's hair and, and leather. And, and he said, A man clothed in soft raiment. Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. And uh, John's uh, clothes were, were actually like the clothes that, that Elijah described as wearing. And, and we know that, that here, uh, John, his ministry was a bold ministry. And like the prophet uh, Isaiah, uh, like the prophet Elijah, uh, uh, John boldly confronted uh, the Israel uh, leaders about their sins, uh, and so, and, and Jesus went on to, and Jesus went on to to ask. Uh, he says, "But what went ye out to see? A prophet?" Now, now, only those who, who seek uh, the truth would be able to look past John's appearance and know that, that he had a message from God. And so, so when it, you know, when it comes to, to hearing the gospel, uh, what, what uh, matters most? Uh, uh, an appearance, the outward appearance of the messenger or the message itself. And a lot of times we are sidetracked by how people look and uh, who they are rather than the message they carry. But here we know that, that John was a prophet from God and, and he had the message. John had the message of repentance. So and so in verse nine, Jesus asks, he, "But what went ye out to see? A prophet?" And uh, the people went out in, in, into the wilderness to hear the word of John because uh, they believed that John was God's prophet. And then it goes on. It goes on here in verse ten. It says, "Yea, I say unto you, and more." Uh, and more than a John is more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written. Behold, I send my messenger before thee. 
before thy face, which shall uh, prepare the way before thee. And John, it, Jesus is declaring that John is more than a prophet because John is fulfilling the promise that God had made that John would be the forerunner for the Messiah, the Savior of the world. And so we see God's wisdom unfolding here in, in the fact that, that uh, he had promised the forerunner of Jesus and then Jesus who, who would ultimately sacrifice his life to pay our sin debts, to bring us back into the fel right fellowship with God. And this is God's wisdom of bringing us back into the fold. But, but we see here that, that those, uh, the major majority of the people, the majority of the multitude uh, is not accepting the wisdom of God. Okay, and, and, and they knew the word, and in, in Malachi 3 and 1, it said that, that this uh, promise would, would come to pass. And so, so here in, in verse 11, uh, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of a woman, there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is at least in the kingdom of heaven is, is greater than he. And so, so Jesus is uh, telling the multitude that John is the greatest among the prophets because the other prophets prophesied the coming of Christ. But here John is announcing that Christ is here. And so, so he had, John had the privilege of being the one to announce that, that, that Christ is here. And because of that, Jesus is saying that he was, he was the greatest among all the prophets. And then it said, notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Referring to those who would, who would uh, embrace Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, uh, those who are in Christ are closed. Those of us who are closed in, in the righteousness of Christ. Now John, uh, John announced the, the coming of Christ. But now that, that we, we are uh, closed in Christ and we are enclosed in his righteousness, not only can we proclaim the coming of Christ, but we can also proclaim the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, which is the gospel. And, and so that, that's what, that's what uh, this uh, verse is indicating here, that those who can proclaim uh, the gospel of Christ, uh, it, uh, the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. That, and that's what, that's what uh, we see here in this verse. Okay, and so uh, now... And, and then we go, go on to uh, verse 12 here. It talks about, it says, And from the day of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and violence, and the violence taketh it, take it by force. And so what we see here, Christ, the kingdom of God, Christ is advancing the kingdom of God. And... Uh, the kingdom would be forcibly opposed. The farther the kingdom advance, the more opposition there is. And the kingdom would be forcibly opposed by violent people. And uh, as, as the kingdom advance, so does opposition increase. Okay, and, and Jesus, Jesus has come and established the kingdom of God, but it's not complete, and it won't be complete until the second coming of Christ. And, and the second coming of Christ, then the fullness of, of uh, the kingdom of God will be established now. 
the, the Jews, God's chosen people, they knew what prophecy, what had been prophesied about the coming Messiah. But they were looking for someone in a, in a political arena that would come and overthrow the Roman government who had suppressed Israel. And they looked past, they were looking past uh, God's wisdom through John the Baptist, who was a forerunner for Christ, and also uh, past uh, Christ, who, who was the true Messiah. And, uh, and, and so, it, so it goes on to say that uh, here in verse 13, it, it talks about, it says, For all the prophets and the law prophesied on, until John. And this refers to back to the Old Testament. And uh, all the prophecy in, in the Old Testament points to the coming of the Messiah. And here, Jesus is saying that John's work uh, has climaxed the message in the Old Testament. Because, because here, uh, they, the uh, Old Testament announced a promise and, um, t until John. Now, uh, here Christ is announcing the fulfillment of the promise. And so, so we, what, what, is being, what we see here is the new di dispensation being ushered in by John, uh, John the Baptist announcing the coming of the Messiah. And it says, and if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which was for, which was for to come. And it, if you will receive it, then we see here John is, is uh, like Elijah, who, who was not afraid to stand and proclaim the truth of God. To, to the leaders and he did it with power and authority and the same same with John John is uh, uh, John is uh, boldly preaching repentance and he's doing it with power and authority okay and so John John is the uh, is the promise of uh, prophets like Elijah, the one who announced the fulfillment of God's long awaited promise. God had promised his, his people way back that, that he, would, he would send a savior. And now we see the promise that God had made coming to pass. In the, in the fact that John the Baptist was preparing the way for Jesus Christ, who was the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. And then, then it says, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear. Now, now this, when you look at this, you, you, uh, like all those, all those in the multitude was not true followers of Christ. And so, you know, some were skeptics and some were just curious. But here, uh, this verse is encouraging those who are followers of Christ to, to listen and heed what, what is being said here. Uh, all who follow Christ was not, not teachable. And so some were, were hard-hearted. And we, we started in their attitude towards John and towards Christ. And so, so what, what we see here, what we're looking at here is, uh, you know, after Jesus answered John's disciples, then, then he praised John by, by, by saying that John, uh, and we know that John was not a popular preacher, but, but he, did, he did not uh, cater to the crowd. And he was not weak in his proclamations. And he was a, a man of conviction and courage. 
uh, and, he, and Jesus said it that he was the greatest of the prophet and uh, he, he was privileged he said that because John was privileged to announce Jesus the Messiah and, and put him it put him in a high position and his ministry marked the climax of the Old Testament so we, we, can, we see that in the first portion of our lesson but let's go on and let's look here in and uh, the second outline, and here uh, we see Jesus condemning uh, those Israelites for their ignorance toward the message of John the Baptist and the, uh, John the Baptist forerunner and toward uh, Jesus the Messiah. And so what he, here in verse 16 through 19, and I, I, let me read those and we'll come back and, and discuss them. Okay, verse 16 said, But whereunto shall I like this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the market and calling unto their fellows and saying, We have piped unto you and you have not danced. We have mourned unto you and ye have not lamented. For John came... Uh, neither eating nor drinking, and they said, He hath a devil. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they said, Behold, a man gluttonous, and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified for her children. Okay, and so here we see, because of their attitude, toward John the Baptist, who was the forerunner of Jesus, and also their attitude toward Jesus, who was the Lamb of God, who came to take away the sins of the world, the Messiah. Because of their attitude toward them, uh, Jesus called them children, and then he called, he said they are like children, and they are like food. They were like children in the sense that because John and Jesus would not uh, play by their rules, then they, they, took, they was taking the attitude of not listening to them. Uh, or they had the attitude as a, as a child, like a childlike attitude. If you don't do it my way, then uh, I'll take my ball and go home. That's the attitude a child would have. And, and this is the attitude we see here in God's uh, chosen people uh, who reject John and reject Jesus because of John's appearance. And here, and when, you, when you go and look, uh, when he, he talks about them being childish, they had the childish attitude. Now, you know, we, we, you have to humble yourself and, and come before God in repentance in order to have your sins forgiven. But they were pouting because they couldn't have their way. And then he said they're like, like uh, fools because if, here they said in verse 18, they said John was no fun. He was boring. He was in the wilderness. His dad was funny and he dressed funny. And they, because of that, they said he had a devil. And so they, they didn't want to have anything to do with John because John was no fun. But in the very next verse, they said that Jesus w was too much fun, that he ate and drank wine with, with sinners. And, and because of that, they, they uh, rejected, rejected them. It said the Son of Man uh, came eating and drinking, and they said, Behold, a man gluttonous, and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. Go, and that's what Jesus said. He came to save, seeking to save those who were lost. And that's why he associated with, with sinners. But they, they were saying that John was too bored, no fun. And Jesus was, was too much fun because, uh, you know, the Jews rejected anyone who associated with, with Gentiles. And, and that's what we see. And, and then it goes on, it, say, it says, but wisdom is justified of her children. Uh, not, 
not, and this, this is not referring to the childness or the childish attitude that, that the multitude had. Uh, and uh, nor, nor fools uh, that rejected John and Jesus. But anyone, and, and this, this verse is pointed to anyone with an honest heart can see the righteousness of both John the Baptist and Jesus. And that, that's what, that's what uh, he's alluding to here in, in this verse. Okay? And so what we have is we, we see the wisdom of God in the fact that he sent, that he fulfilled the promise of the Old Testament. And now, now Israel knew, knew the Old Testament. And they knew that it had been prophesied that God would send a Savior. And when John the Baptist announced that the Savior had come, then because of their selfish motives and their self-righteous attitude, they rejected both John and Jesus uh, because they knew that if, if they, would, they would yield to the, uh, God's son, then they would have to change their way of life. And they, would, they were sitting in it and they didn't, they didn't want to change. And there, there are a lot of people today know that Jesus Christ is the son of God. And the only way back to the Father is through him. But in order to get there, you have to come with a repenting spirit. And that, that was the whole up. That's why they didn't, they didn't yield to, to the preaching of John, who was preaching repentance, nor to Jesus Christ, who, uh, who is the Savior of the world, because of their attitudes and their uh, desire to keep doing what they were doing. But here we see when a person rejects Christ, he, he's, he's a, a childish or he's like a fool. You know, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. But, but we know better. And so, and so it's laid out here. God's wisdom will prevail regardless of how we act or react to it. Lord, we thank you for this time. Thank you for your word. We pray, Lord, that our hearts and minds will be receptive to the things of God, that we won't have a childish attitude or be foolish and, and reject your wisdom. We love you, we praise you, we magnify you. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks and praises always. Well, again, friends, we thank you for joining us on today, and we look forward to having you in our next session. So until then, may God richly bless and keep you is our prayer. What's wrong with the people today, the people today, oh somebody.